Create that life legacy designers, Amber Prosia here. Welcome to episode number 22 of the Parenting Biz Podcast, coming to you every Monday. Now let's chat with this week's featured guest, Mike McDonald. Mike, are you ready to guide us on your journey of how you design the life you've always wanted? I am, can't wait. Awesome, so glad you're here. Mike is someone that lives with cystic fibrosis and diabetes, but it doesn't let it stop him. After building a tennis coaching and personal training business to the point where he hit his limit and noticing how many conversations he was having with his clients, he took his coaching online, helping entrepreneurs get into the best mental state to succeed. Right now, Mike hosts his own podcast, co-owns an entrepreneurial magazine, and is always looking for new and exciting ways to impact his local community and the world. Mike, it's an honor to have you on the show today. Please take a minute and fill in any gaps from that intro and give us a little glimpse of your own personal life. Yeah, thanks for the um, the intro, Amber. Um, I do still have those conditions, by the way, so it's not something that ever goes away. But um, a lot of the a lot of the things that you mentioned were, was actually uh, quite quite right. To be fair, I mean, it's something that's happening now. It's something that. I'm always doing, but I am always looking to improve as well. So one of the big things that I do maybe on a weekly basis is I always look to the future and always see if if I can do something to change it or improve it. Yeah, fantastic. And this is the right way to do it, right? Just keep growing and learning as you go. Exactly right, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. I really can't wait to dive in. So as you are aware, our listeners are parents or parents-to-be that realize ownership is key to not only to our parenting or business, but in life in general. And along that parenting journey, we can lose sight of that. However, if we focus on life as a game or a sport or an activity, not only can we let go easier, but we can also gain strength from our mistakes and design our core focus to be one of laughter, joy, and most importantly, having fun, just like a five-year-old kid in the sandbox. So this week, our entire interview will be dribbled around a basketball game called Keep Your Feet Moving. Now, as you guys are all aware, this is just an analogy, and we can create and design our lives any way we want. And there's no better person than Mike to teach us not only how to take the shot, but to look good taking that shot as well. So, Mike, let's get right into it, and let's go in with the first element of the game, which is understanding the game. And it's just basketball 101. So... You know, before we begin any sport, it's just giving a slight understanding of the rules of the game. We don't need to be experts right off the bat, but we do need to understand a few basic rules like dribbling, shooting, and passing. So before we go into anything further, can you please explain to our audience what is cystic fibrosis? Well, cystic fibrosis <clears throat> excuse me, is it's actually a genetic condition which, which impacts me, but it also impacts a lot, of, a lot of other children as well. And you can be impacted in very, very different ways. So there's different, different scales, different intensities of the actual conditions themselves, but um, they, they affect mostly the, the lungs and the digestive system. Fantastic. And how does it affect your day-to-day life now? Well, right now it probably doesn't affect it as much because I was diagnosed when I was two months old. So I've had over over 25 years of living with this. But I would imagine... I would imagine things like making sure I'm eating the right food, making sure I'm sleeping enough, taking all the the medication and all the treatment that I do. I've got to keep myself active as well. Otherwise, it, it all sort of starts to degrade quite quickly in terms of my, my health and everything else. So it's something that I've, <clears throat> I've learned to, to cope with, I've learned to, to deal with and... And yeah, just try and keep on top of, but I would imagine that if I didn't do those things, then my life would be very different. Oh, absolutely. And because you found it when you were two months old, you probably got that ingrained with you from your parents, right? Your parents had to adjust to adapt to understanding yourself and your needs, and they may be different than other children. How has it been with your parents growing up? How, have you brought, Has that brought you guys closer? Um, it's it's interesting you say that because one of the one of the conversations that we have actually had in the past was when I was diagnosed the um, the actual consultants at the hospital or the the doctors actually turned around and said well you're going to need to know as much as I know about cystic fibrosis if you're going to be able to keep because at, at the time the actual mortality was quite high with cystic fibrosis so the the consultants turned around and said you know you're going to need to know as much about the condition as as I do if, if you're going to be able to basically help me survive for mm-hmm. want of a better word um, so a lot of it was 
knowledge. A lot of it was trying to actually know more about the condition itself before we could, you know, well, I say we, <laughs> it wasn't me, I was only a baby at the time, yes. but my, my parents could actually try to figure out how to help. So everything like, I was playing a lot of sport when I was younger, I was always outside, I was either running around or doing martial arts because the um, schools where I'm based in the UK, they all had their own like martial arts instructor, so I was put in for that. I was doing a lot of different things just to keep myself active. I know, I know a lot of parents do that with their kids anyway but I kind of felt like every day I had something on which to a lot of people probably doesn't doesn't really seem like a lot because you're like well we always put our kids in, in sports and activities and things but it was like even if I maybe had a bad day for instance or I didn't particularly enjoy it they would always try to make it so I enjoyed doing what I was doing as well mm-hmm. because they sort of knew that you know it's not easy anyway like between life and and running your business and and trying to push forwards it's not easy anyway it's it's always going to be tough you're always going to come up against days when you don't want to do it when you you really just would rather you know stay indoors and just curl up and hope it it all disappears but it's it's the idea of enjoying what it is that you're doing so the things that I was doing every day I would enjoy it because it, I felt like I, I could do it as well. So it was like if I could do something or if I could keep up with the other kids and, and all those sorts of things, then I was more likely to keep doing it <clears throat> and then feel the benefit as a result as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. And how has it been within the UK? Because like how you touched on it, you don't feel like it, but especially with the weather in the UK, that it might be grayish or you know people damp or just cold and bone achy. How has that still, like did your parents still strongly encourage you to still go out and do things regardless of the weather? Yeah, um, funnily enough, the, the actual conditions themselves. So cystic fibrosis is... It's got lots of different strains and lots of different strands. So I'm based in in Lancashire or or Cheshire in in the UK, and I've got that strand as well. So it's like it's it's kind of it's very different as well based on where you live. It can it can also be very different because of that as well. So I've got that strain, but you are quite right. I am very very susceptible to different changes in the weather and hot and cold and I've got to I've got to almost like plan for things like that as well Mm -hmm. so I I actually used to say if I could get through a winter without like going into hospital or or being ill or then I I could last the rest of the year because I'm affected quite a lot by the cold Yes. So if if it's in the summer, which it is, it is now in the UK, I'm actually feeling quite good. So I can exercise more. I feel like I'm more productive. Um, I'm not needing to. I guess it's easier to keep up with the workload in the summer because I've got much more energy between me able to to breathe better and the actual vitamin D from the sun as well because I'm outside quite a bit when it's sunny. It just all helps me keep going. So so sometimes. It can be a case of <clears throat> predicting the the bad spells, so then you can just say to yourself, get through them, and you can eventually find the the good spells afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't mind asking, are you still undergoing constant medical treatments and physiotherapy? I am. Yeah, um, this is something that I've been doing forever. So since I was diagnosed, I take um, tablets and medication, and I do treatments every single day. So this is something that, again, when I first started, <clears throat> it was quite hard to integrate it in. I went through a phase of not really wanting to do it either. So I mean, you probably experienced this when you were a teenager. It was like you just kind of rebel against mm-hmm. a lot of different things when you were a teenager, and. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately my condition was one of them so I didn't enjoy a lot of it and I guess the the idea that I was also changing as well like being a teenager you go through a, a big peak in, in how fast you change it sort of made the the transition a little bit worse yeah absolutely and just for some of the audience who are listening right now of of just some statistics for them like in Australia one in tw- 
2,500 babies are born with cystic fibrosis. So if you think about it, that's one in every four days. And on average, one in 25 people carry the cystic fibrosis gene. And most are actually unaware of this, that they are even carriers. And because carriers of cystic fibrosis are unaffected and therefore show no symptoms, it's hard for them to appreciate that cystic fibrosis may be a real risk. But any of us could be a carry, carrier and we wouldn't know. So if you think about it, that's about 1 million unaware carriers and that could be you. Um, and in Tassie alone, 1 in 20 people carry that um, cystic fibrosis gene. And that's the second highest rate in the world behind Ireland, which I found really interesting because of the climate. Because Tassie's really, really cold and so is Ireland, but same within the UK. Um, I just thought that there may be some correlation. Have you come came across any of that information before? Or that's just, that has nothing to do with it? Um, I have, and it was only maybe two or three weeks ago that um, I was told that cystic fibrosis actually came out of Ireland. It was apparently, um, I mean, I could be wrong on this because it's just what I've been told, but I was I was told it was to do with the potato famine as well. So it sort of came about as a result of that, um, which I, did, I didn't know, but I didn't realise. I was like, oh, okay. So apparently cystic fibrosis came out of Ireland, which is something I was a bit surprised about mm -hmm. and I, I, I had a moment of oh wouldn't it be great if if that didn't happen you know <laughs> but uh yeah no it's uh, just one of those things I guess sometimes the the knowledge can be a bad thing as well as a good thing yeah absolutely and we were talking a little bit <clears throat> offline just before we jumped on is also you have diabetes and so if you could just explain a what diabetes are and then also that it's really common with cystic fibrosis if you if you're a carrier too if you don't mind elaborating that would be great yeah, well, the, the idea behind having um, diabetes and cystic fibrosis is it's to do with the, uh, the mucus in the body. So when you've got cystic fibrosis, your body produces more mucus than everybody else because we all have it. It's just we've got more of it if, you're, if, if you have cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> excuse me. That's okay. When you hit a certain point, you get to a certain age, you're, you're more susceptible to diabetes because of the amount of mucus that builds up. So it just, it's just a, a case where it just gets worse over time. Mm -hmm. um, when you get to an adult, we actually get tested for cystic fibrosis-related diabetes because that's when you're more likely to get it. And I was one of those people, so I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis-related diabetes and cystic fibrosis. And... A lot of people know of type 1 and type 2. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll quickly go through those and then I'll dive into what CF fits as well. Sure, thank you. So, so if you imagine type 1 is to do with the actual pancreas itself. So this is where the, the membrane between the pancreas and your blood is not working quite right. So you need... Um, insulin in order to, to compensate for that. So when you're diabetic, you need insulin to control your blood sugar. With type 2, it's to do with the, the fat buildup that's on the outside. So this is why a lot of people with type 2 diabetes do tend to actually get it because of their diet. So they've got a high-fat diet or the diet's not quite optimal so that the fat builds up around the, the pancreas, which then causes the insulin to struggle to get through or it slows it down or it makes it non-existent pretty much so then again you need insulin or to improve your diet in order to counteract that so it's all based on the idea of your body's not able to control your own blood sugar so the food that you're eating the the sugar that you're eating that causes your blood sugar to go up it doesn't then go back down because you're not releasing the insulin because that's what insulin does it helps absorb the sugar from your blood into the rest of your body and with cystic fibrosis related diabetes it's actually the mucus inside so it's not to do with the membrane itself it's not to do with the fat on the outside it's the build of mucus on the inside that's causing the the insulin to struggle to get through but unfortunately I actually had a bit of a because I, I used to be a personal trainer I was like right I'm going to try and, and beat this you know because mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing I mean I was eating reasonably well anyway but there's another level that I could go so I was at a point where I was like right well I can have a sandwich and I can have pasta and all this because I was exercising and it was great and I felt good so I was like right well there is a level that I could go so I went through a phase of trying to beat it it's just the, the way I'm made unfortunately so I was like right I'm going to go 
for it. I'm going to cut down on my carbs. I'm going to limit how much I'm eating. I'm going to make sure I'm eating much healthier than what I already was. And I'm, I'm going to try and beat this thing. So I did. They put, um, they put a monitor on me for, I think it was five days or a week. I would monitor my food through the, um, the monitor, measure my glucose all the time. So it was like a, a continuous thing. It wasn't like I just had stabbed myself to check my blood. It was it was on me. So I was able to just focus on my eating and exercising and everything else. And it didn't matter. So it wasn't about what I was eating. It was about what my body was doing with what I was eating, if that made sense. <clears throat> so there wasn't anything I could do about it. Um, I didn't really enjoy the fact that I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't improve it. I couldn't change it. Um, it, it did make a difference, to be fair. So me me having less carbs did make a difference, but I was still above the, the threshold that they set. So I still then had to tell, tell myself I was diabetic and I had to start injecting myself with insulin every day from there. Right, wow. And yeah, because sometimes it can t- you take a little bit in your head, isn't it, when you have that mentality of I want to beat it and then unfortunately just acceptance at the same time too. So, and you never know, it could change in time. So I'm sure you'll stay positive on that. What are some common symptoms that you encounter with that um, type of diabetes? So cystic fibrosis, diabetes. It's um, it's probably similar to the others. So okay. there's a lot of, of crashes that can happen. I need to make sure that <clears throat> I'm eating often enough. I need to make sure that I'm eating certain carbs as well. Like I can't have too much sugar in one go so I've got to spread out the food that I'm eating Mm -hmm. to make sure that the energy levels are high but they never go too high so Mm -hmm. you hear of like kids being hyper don't you and they've got all they have all the blue M&Ms and and all those sorts of things and it it causes a lot of of kids to go hyper unfortunately I can't I can't do that anymore Mm -hmm. um because if you don't know if insulin had its way your blood sugar would actually hit zero and you'd probably go asleep so it's it's having the it's having that knowledge as well that as soon as you start injecting as soon as you start taking on insulin is <clears throat> you actually need food in order to keep your blood sugar at a certain point otherwise insulin will cause you to go into a, a coma and, and crash and you need sugar to then boost yourself back up again so a lot of it is about preventing those things as well Mm -hmm. so a lot of people listening might relate to the idea of it's not really about having the the positive side it's about preventing the negative side which I'm sure a lot of us spend a lot of our time doing in fact is we don't really aim for like the the big things we don't aim for the, the highs we just try to prevent the lows and that's what I spent a lot of my time doing but what I didn't realize was it would affect uh, me mentally as well so because the brain uses glucose primarily for energy and that was something that that I needed because although you can switch to more of a a fat um, fuel as well over time um, because I'm diabetic and I need sugar I had to understand that well it's going to affect my mental state as well Mm -hmm. so when I was running my business and first starting out and then I was diagnosed as well it was like okay well how how can I do this like how can I actually use this to my advantage or even just cope with it because I'm sure you understand that running your business can be mentally draining as well it can be physically draining as well you need to make sure that you're you're feeling good in order to to do things you know it's just just recording the the podcast now there were certain things that I needed just in order to to be able to come on and and feel like I've got the energy to give a reasonably okay interview Mm -hmm. but I I do videos um, I've got my own podcast um, as you mentioned in the beginning I also co-own a magazine and we're we're running um, meetup in the future and it's all it's all go in other words it's all pretty wild at the minute so being able to keep up with that and being able to feel like I can make the best decisions as well because we've all been there we've all made decisions that we could probably not have made like we could probably do with making a different decision or making a better decision or maybe taking a bit more time before you make the decision because a lot of us do pride ourselves on being fast as well like you'd you'd be surprised what being fast can do but actually making the wrong decision because you've not spent enough time trying to to weigh up pros and cons or you've not spent time trying to predict what could happen if you made those decisions and 
it takes a lot out of you and it takes a lot of energy in order to think that way. <clears throat> but unfortunately, because I'm someone that almost prides themselves on on being a bit of a, a person that does stink about these things and I, I, I'm a coach as well. So I actually help people with this process and I want to make sure that if, if, I'm, if I'm not in the best state in order to, to help others, things start to struggle. So I've got to make sure that I eat enough. I've got to make sure that I'm constantly really aware of how much energy I have because I know that I'm only good at certain times of the day. Like evenings are very difficult for me just to, I mean, I can do emails and I can write blog posts and I can do all like the little things. But if I wanted to do a video and do a good video, by the way, it's uh, it takes a lot. Like it's not just about the video. No, if I, 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 I could turn the camera on and I could mumble my way through 20 minutes. But if I want to do it well, then there's a certain amount of energy and and I guess just enthusiasm as well yeah, that has absolutely. to go with that. Honestly, Mike, I think you touched on so many elements. Like, it's fantastic that you're so in tune with your body. And I feel like a lot of people in the audience who may or may not have cystic fibrosis doesn't matter. It's just actually being in tune with your body and knowing what drains you and what, what re-energizes you or what gains you energy. And being aware of it at your time of day and not overdoing it with your mental capability. Because, yeah, we really want to put out that best version of ourself and we don't have to be in overdrive all the time it's actually better to take down that downtime and reflect like how you said and actually observe okay is this the right decision and actually take a step back to then make two steps forward um so yeah no that's definitely crucial and it's great that you've you've taught yourself that you know and it's and maybe you wouldn't have learned if you didn't have cystic fibrosis and diabetes or maybe you would have but it may have taken you longer so i'm a firm believer things happen for a reason or reasons and you know it's just it's just fantastic that you've learned that lesson because there's many people probably even listening right now that probably still haven't even learned that lesson yet so keep going and you know just keep listening to yourself and everyone has their own intuition they know what's right for them. It's just our choice to listen or, and hear it and accept it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting point you made as well that I probably might not have been in this point if it wasn't for the conditions that I have. And it's an, it's interesting you say that because it happens a lot, doesn't it? Like we don't really we don't really change anything. We don't really want things to be different or better or just more efficient or more effective or more positive. Like we don't do it actively, so it's not something that we tend to be proactive with. And we, like, if if you're in the, if you're in a bad place, like if you're not very successful, if you're not earning the money that you need just to cover your bases, you'll do whatever it takes to get there. But like you'll because you're you're fighting that you're you're fighting the idea of you know whatever it is. The reason why you're there causes you to take action to move away from that that's why you hear so many rags to riches stories right like people need to be in the the negative to see what it's like to see what they're fighting to see what they're moving away from to then move away from it but a lot of people are in this like comfortable middle ground they're in the they're in the the, the meh level right they're at yes. the point where it's not so bad that they need to do anything about it but it's not it's not so good that, I don't know, maybe they're afraid of losing it, right? So mm. if things go really, really well, you're like, well, maybe it won't last long and maybe it won't last forever. And what, what if it stops and then I go back to where I was? And you have all these these conversations with yourself when things start to go well, that you then like think about losing it. <clears throat> but then it's like, well, you need – sometimes people need the, the bad to happen to them in order for them to go and, and change something because – if they're comfortable, if it is in the grey area, if it's not quite, if it's not quite bad enough for them to change it, chances are they probably won't. And I had a conversation with someone about this, and he said, "Well, sometimes you've just got to make the situation that you're in bad enough before you can change it." Now that can be physically, so that can be you literally being in a worse situation, or that can be just in your own head. So you can either physically 
be worse. Like, you know, I've literally got more going out than I've got coming in. Or you can just almost like raise the bar for what is acceptable or raise your standards for the way that you you feel comfortable with so you basically raise your your comfort level like you say right i'm no longer comfortable with this because it's not good enough this is the thing that i need to go and change but a lot of people don't do that they get very very comfortable yeah absolutely and i think that's a great leeway into our next element of the game which is team effort because People with cystic fibrosis are encouraged to socialize with each other, or sorry, are not encouraged to social, socialize with each other because the risk of the cross infection and the the exhibition of the lung condition is too great, and that puts you guys all at high risk. So that means it can be quite lonely in existence in the respect that people with cystic fibrosis can't personally interact and share experiences and offer support as we would commonly think that would be our best way to go. And within basketball, you know, you need to have help with the other four people on the court. You can't win the game alone. So how have you built a team outside for your own health and your business to succeed to where you are today? It's uh, It's been more, <clears throat> I guess, more challenging because of the condition as well. Like, it's, it's hard to find people that also understand my own limits. So I've had to be quite... Um, I wouldn't say picky, but I've had to be quite um, intentional with the people that I have around me. So a lot of the people that I do spend time with are also business owners. A lot of them do have skills that I don't have. A lot of them are quite empathetic as well. Like they understand if like, I need to finish earlier than they do. Um, it's, it's always been hard. Because when I was younger, for instance, when I was at a point when it was quite, I guess, it was just like everything was about the condition when I was younger. It was like, okay, I've got to take this and I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to make sure I fit this in. And I couldn't, I couldn't socialize with a lot of my friends in school. So I couldn't do things like sleepovers or have friends around <clears throat> because my room was set up with like physio beds and and IVs and, and all kinds of stuff. And it wasn't something that we wanted to, to show people. It wasn't something that we wanted my friends around and then they'd ask questions and, and all those sorts of things. So it wasn't something that I actually had the privilege of having when I was growing up. So I've almost got used to to that i've got used to doing things on my own to a certain extent i got used to just getting by by myself but then when that moment came and i was like right well i don't want to just get by i want to actually be in a good place i want to be someone that's that's recognized or valued or just someone that's making a difference so i realized that i needed people around me that couldn't <clears throat> that couldn't be around me for, for long periods of time so I thought right well virtual is probably the way to go so this is why social media is so helpful for a lot of people but in the business sector it's even more so so everything from I've got people that help me with the business I've got people that I just socialize with I've got people that are within my community so they, they see the content that I put out and they tell me that it's I'm doing a good job and and all those sorts of things and it's not something that is talked a lot about but running your business is quite lonely anyway mm -hmm. but it's it's probably made worse with the fact that the people that really understand me the most like aside from my family I can't really talk to or or engage with face to face it has to be virtual so having having that it's it's, it's funny that we're going down this road because a lot of the things that a lot of the things that we talk about, a lot of the things that we're talking about, they happen in business anyway. So everything like make, making sure that you've got the energy, making sure that you're focusing on doing the things that move the needle rather than you know, burning yourself out doing things that don't really matter to the business or to you in general and making sure that you've got a support network around because running your business is quite lonely. And it's amazing how many parallels there are to having like health conditions that affect your entire lifestyle and taking on the, the responsibility of running your own business. There's a lot of parallels, but I think people may be starting to get the message that it's even more so in my case. Like yeah. I've, 
yeah, yeah so I agree, but I feel like I feel like that you have an advantage, you know, like because you already have been learning and grooming this all along. This has been your training for business, where other people have to go through the hurdles and they're still going back to like their birth of their business, right? Where they're having to learn, well, this is actually burning me on both ends of the sticks of the candle, you know, however you want to look at it. Or, wow, this is lonely. I didn't realize. I thought when I left work and a, a full time job that, you know, this would just be exploding and people would be all around me when it's not and that there's a huge difference between being alone and being lonely right and it's actually owning yourself and understanding your own self-worth and your self-love and picking and choosing who you spend that time with because you know are they on track with your focus goals or are they understanding where you're going and are they coming with you and cheering you on and you guys are helping each other excel and be great or is one pulling you back right so I feel like actually you know, with a condition or without a condition, I feel like it's an advantage because you've had all those years of experience before you even got there, where a lot of people wish they would have had that, regardless however you would have got that experience, because we can get this experience from many other ways. It doesn't have to be a health condition. You know, it could have been another hurdle of life of, you know, a loss of a loved one when they were young and this has impacted them, or it could have been depression or anxiety or, you know, so many different things. Um, but this is your story and this is what's great about it, Mike, because then you get to share your story and enlighten and inspire other people that may have a similar story or where they can take your experience and mold it into their own without having to go through all of it, but still learn the lessons from you without going through the experiences. That makes sense. Yeah, that's quite a good point. And I guess it's not it's not been a big transition for me either. Like it's like where, as you mentioned, like people that don't have the training, so to speak, that don't have the the experience of of having those things and then deciding to start a business, but they've not got that level of training, they've not had the experience that some people have had, like they've just had to live with. It's it's almost like being chucked in the deep end, isn't it? But if you're someone that's had the the swim training, if you're someone that's been practicing over and over again, you're more likely to to swim. So yeah, I quite like that idea. And just to touch on something else as well, um, I I feel like I've had a business for all my life. So I've only ever had one job, so to speak. I've only ever worked with somebody else once. And the rest of the time, I, I started my, my tennis coaching when I was, <clears throat> I think I was 17 or 18. Uh, the personal training was when I was around 19 or 20. I was running them at the same time. So it was it was something that I've always done. It's not something that, that I've ever experienced. And I've not really had the experience of doing anything else. So I guess when you look at it that way, it's something that I was drawn to, I guess, because of the condition and because it, there was a lot of parallels involved with, you know, how to run a business, but at the same time, how to, how I've always lived, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, when you, when you look at things differently, so previous on the episode, we had a mom that has an autistic child and it's looking at your strengths and your weaknesses and knowing, you know what? Yeah, my son will never work a nine to five job just won't work, you know, just won't happen, doesn't have the attention span. So what is he great at? And it's the exact same thing with yourself. It's like, well, what am I great at? What do I like to do? What do I have energy for? How can I give value? And it was like adapting and molding. And we're in the world now where anything is possible. It's, it's always been that way. It's just however you looked at it. But it's really brilliant that you said it because actually the next element we're going to go into is training. And you have been training <laughs> for all this, all your life. This is what you've been doing. And in basketball or any sport for this matter, it's not 100% about how you play the game on the court when it's game time. It's actually all the effort, practice, and choices off the court that truly prepare you to win. So can you just go through some of the actual daily <clears throat> habits that you've crafted to be the ultimate version of yourself? Okay. Well, a lot of it is the, in the morning for me. So a lot of the things I do in the morning because I've had to base it on the treatments that I have. So everything from the physio to the medicines to the treatment and, and everything else, it's all based on what I do in the morning and then what I do in the evening because a lot of the things that I do, I do twice a day. So what I thought about doing many years ago was, okay, well, what if I did more alongside 
the treatments that I was already doing. So everything from reading to making sure that I have a, a reasonably okay breakfast to exercising to taking the treatments to listening to music and podcasts and, and all things like that. I've basically like it integrated a lot of different things into my morning and into my evening so that I can tick a lot of the boxes that, that I need and a lot of the boxes that I feel I need in order to not just get through the day but to give myself the the best start so my morning routine is basically I wake up I do my physio while I either read or listen to a podcast then when I go downstairs I make um my breakfast but it's the same breakfast that I have every day so there's that that habit element in there as well listen to a podcast while I eat my breakfast so I'm trying to combine a lot of different things and then I get ready to to go to the gym so I get my, my gym kit on, I, I make sure I get water and I, 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 I think I filter my water so I, it's a bit healthier than, than otherwise, it's not as it's not as metally for want of a better expression and, and, and then I go to the gym and then I come back for around uh, dinner time and you know I, I get tra- just, eh, dressed, changed maybe make sure I'm, I'm ready to go and then I have my lunch so my my routine tends to last pretty much the whole morning from everything from physio to make sure I fit in the, the the learning side of things that I need and if I if I need to I also check my emails and social media as well just so I'm, I'm kept up to date because having a, a morning off from doing those things can mean I'm, I'm very, very far behind. So I just make sure I, I make sure I'm up to date in the mornings. And then in the afternoon, I do either content stuff. So it, the afternoons when I've got my sort of high energy stint, it's when I feel the clearest and I'm at my best. So I either record videos or write articles or do like a, a live stream and things like a Facebook group or or, or in, in other places like Instagram as well. So I do, I do my, I do my more, most energy expending work when I've got the most energy to give, and that mm-hmm. tends to be in the afternoons. So that's that's pretty much my day from <clears throat> wake up to oh, excuse me to getting ready for the afternoon. Yeah, and no, that's brilliant. Because just for those who don't aren't aware, like with cystic fibrosis and diabetes, it is a lifelong, ongoing, and relentless management of treatment that you have to give yourself. And it's phenomenal that you've actually incorporated a morning ritual because, again, the a parallel with business, but all the top successful business people in the world. So you're looking at Tony Robbins, um, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett, all of them, all the top leaders, they all have one thing in common and it is a morning ritual. They all have that morning ritual. It might be different per person, but they have that morning ritual that they do. And it doesn't have to, I, it's great that you get to have all morning to do it, but your morning ritual could be 15 minutes. It could be a half an hour. It could be an hour, whatever it is. But before your day starts, you're actually priming yourself and whatever fuels you to be at your top game. And those are the, what the top successful people do. So the fact that you're modeling that, Mike, is fantastic because anyone who models what successful people are doing will give you the likelihood of similar results of what they have. So it's just brilliant that you're actually doing that. Again, not knowingly or knowingly, right? But you are doing it. And that's all that matters is the implementation and the action. So I'm going to wrap up today's game, but before we do so, do you have any final words from today's game that you'd like to say? I think the the last thing that I would like to say is it's it's about trying to find out what works best for you. So yeah, I am I am able to do certain things that other people probably couldn't do because their lifestyle is different. So a lot of people listening to this are, are parents, right? So they, they've got kids. Now, I don't have kids, so I can't 100% relate. But what I will say is <clears throat> you've got a lot less time than some people will have because you've got children now you have a family so you need to find out a different way of making it work for you so that that could be anything from getting the the children involved even you know like if you want to incorporate like a healthy breakfast or you want to incorporate meditation into your morning then why can't 
that the children do that as well. It seems like if it's going to benefit you, then it would benefit your children as well. It just seems to make sense, at least to me. So you've got to find out any way that you can integrate whatever it is that you're doing into the lifestyle that you currently have. That would be my last piece of advice for you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all about integration. That's what this whole podcast is about, is integrating family, health, wealth, business, all in one, because you can do it all. And it's just like you said, why not incorporate your children? Um, and honestly, even all the habits that I'm doing, I'm, I'm about to be a mom do any day now, actually. Um, but literally I'll still keep up with these habits too, because I want our child to see it because I keep repeating myself about this is that our children will actually do what we do, not <laughs> do what we tell them to do if we don't do it. So they do actually need to see us doing it as well. So awesome, Mike. Thank you so much for being so open and honest and just real with us today and sharing your experience. We've definitely got a lot of golden nuggets from you. So thank you so much. How can our audience get in touch with you if they want to connect or work with you or just have questions or maybe going through a similar thing or maybe have a parent that actually has a cystic fibrosis or diabetes child? Maybe you could help them. I don't know. But how can they get in touch with you? And anything you share, I'll I'll add to the, the show notes. Oh, of course, yeah. So if you want to, to reach out to me, I, I'm very active on Facebook mostly. Um, that's where it's, it's probably more personal on Facebook than anywhere else. So you can add me as a friend on Facebook, send me a message if, if you want some help, particularly if, if you have someone that has the same conditions as me or something similar, more than happy to, to reach out. Um, you can also check out the, the podcast that I have, which is called The Raw Show. And you can also join the, the, the Facebook group that I have. So this is for people that do run their own businesses and they are entrepreneurs as well. And that's called the Confident and Fearless Entrepreneur. So yeah, you can check me out there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate it. I'll put all the links in the show notes so they can just click on it for you. But thank you so much for being on our show. It's been our pleasure and fitting us in your schedule. Really, really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much, listeners, for listening to today's episode. We appreciate and love you all. If you've enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, or follow us on your chosen platform. And of course, share with anyone you can see benefiting from it. For those who are brand new listening to our show, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Podbean, and Spotify. And we'll be releasing our next episode every Monday. So have a great week, and we'll look forward to you tuning in then. Take care. Bye, guys.